Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Artcasters number 171, even though right now I'm looking at the page and it says 172, so I messed up there. I'll have to go back uh -huh. and change that. <laughs> but yeah, one, I think we're 171, and uh, we have Matthew Enstrom on today, and we'll get to him in a minute. But uh, first, I kind of just want to go around and find out uh, what everyone has been up to, what they're doing, uh, maybe what how they are in their their. 100 day challenge and all that good stuff. So uh, I guess I'll kick it off since it's my channel. So you probably know who I am. Um, usually I'm promoting, the only thing I really have to promote is the uh, Comic Maker Starter Kit. But instead of that, I do want to promote the fact that I will be launching a Kickstarter. It's most yes. likely gonna launch on Tuesday. But um, so if you're watching this after the fact, maybe it's after Tuesday or whatever, just hop on there. If you go to right now, if you go to, if you're going there before Tuesday, if you go to youngandthedead.com, it's going to take you to my old Kickstarter. But eventually that will switch over to the new one. So if you're after Tuesday, when it goes live, that will take you right to the Kickstarter. So that's what I'm starting to promote now. So um, and that is basically uh, my comic book, Young and the Dead. Issue number four is complete. I'm launching that along with. If you don't have the other issues, you can get you can get one or all or just two or you know, there's all kinds of different tiers and stuff. So that's what I'm promoting this week. Uh, what about you, Josh? Anything to promote? What's what's going on? Other than your Kickstarter, which is at theyoungandthedead.com, correct? Not the Young and the Dead. It's just Young and the Dead. So that, that, that's one thing that I have to tell people because everyone says the the reason why it's Young and the Dead is because there's kind of a double meaning be, behind that. Um, one because the kids are young, and but two because the main character—that's the—that's his last name—is young. So it's not the young and the dead; it's just young and the dead. Yes. Okay. Good. And that's right. actually better because that's shorter URL. <laughs> yeah. So, Youngandthedead.com. Um, that would be my <laughs> biggest promotion right now because Scott's been working really hard on this book, and he just wrapped it. And we need to support it, and we need to show the internet um, the power of the hundreds. So let's get this thing funded quickly. Um, awesome. Other than that, um, I would say just check out my stuff at quarterlystories.com after you've funded that Kickstarter. And then um, also uh, you can check out my stuff on your Android or uh, iOS or smartphone device um, by going to tapas.io and subscribing to it there. And that comic is a comic I handwrite, hand letter, hand ink, and then hopefully hand to you someday in print, which is, I'm going to have to come up with a new tagline um, in a couple months because it might actually get closer to that that actual print date. Um, awesome. I can't wait for the that. The exciting thing about your Kickstarter is it's hope for all of us because it's like when you go slow and steady, it can feel like very slow progress, and then the next thing you know, you're running a Kickstarter to, to print the thing, and uh, that's, that's huge. So, yeah. All right, um, Matthew... Where can we find your yeah. stuff? And and by the way, it's also a real pleasure to, to talk to you in, in person, kind of like, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, just look up Fart Bucket Tunes, uh, the name I've, I've been uh, hooked up with. The uh, I, I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, uh, also under Fart Bucket Tunes. Nice. And and the comic I did during the 100s, uh, I just put up on eBay. Uh, there's 17 issues actually you know, up there on eBay. So uh, if you go to Fart Bucket Tunes on Facebook, I put a link to that in there. So. Awesome, and I, n another memorable URL too. So I do have a I do have a question, Matthew. So um, yeah. do you have more than one YouTube channel or? Because I, I, I put your YouTube channel down. It's uh, Matthew Enstrom. Is there a separate Fart Bucket Tunes yeah. book? Yeah. Uh, I haven't been able to. It, the one you got's most likely the right one. Okay. Uh, okay. The, I, I haven't been able to connect the name with that okay. YouTube one. Okay, cool. So yeah. um, so I want to get into, before we kind of get into our topic today, which is going to sort of be what the topic you wanted to talk about was sort of, uh, you know, improving your YouTube videos and, and we may just get into just YouTube in general, cha yeah. you know, creating a channel and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but um, so I, you know, I, I'm right now I'm kind of, I'm on your, your YouTube page right now. 
and judging by the book that you just showed us that you have for sale and judging by the posters and stuff in back of your uh, of your studio <laughs> there, you, it seems like you are really big in as far as drawing cryptids. So yeah. I, I'm just curious how excited you were with this particular theme for the anthology. Were you were you a big proponent of trying to get this as the theme, or did it just happen that way? Yeah. Or uh, uh, I I wanted to be in the in, in the book. Then uh, uh, when I heard the theme, I was just kind of like, oh, all right. Because at first I thought it was just werewolves or unicorns, right. and I was like, how am I going to do this? And yeah, you the, weren't alone. <laughs> the, the, the first thing I, I thought was uh, the first story I came up with was uh, uh, the Michigan Dogman helped and Bigfoot, and Bigfoot helps the Michigan Dogman get back to Michigan because he's lost. And I, I was going to use the Michigan Dogman as a werewolf if if I had to stretch it that way. Right. But because uh, it, it in the cryptid uh things they they say the michigan dogman is not a werewolf but i, I was going to say it was just to be able to do that but, right yeah but, yeah because i i you know i think josh and i kind of you know were worried about that in the beginning too and i still i still like the i i don't know it was marshall lee who quoted it but the tales from the cryptid i kind of wish they would have went with that yeah. theme but but you know it's it's still kind of the same thing but but anyway, yeah, I think there was a lot of confusion in the beginning of what you, you know, what actually you could do. So, um, but. Yeah, and I think I'm really glad that it opened up to more of like a general mythological theme because that, like, the second that happened, like the story I kind of wanted to tell could work with that. Whereas like the one, you know, I, I was really dumbfounded for a little bit just trying to figure out like, so I'm like this auto bio guy. Like I don't know, I don't know like how you do like what's my autobiographical story about werewolves or unicorns, which neither I've really connected with. Um, that being said, though, I've seen some of the stuff people have been doing, staying on just directly on theme, and um, it surprised me and opened my mind to like that theme because I'm like, there's a lot of really creative intelligent like versions of of that theme that that are taking kind of spins on it that i wouldn't have thought of so it's cool but, yeah i was really surprised with the variety of different uh, angles yeah to the, you know the werewolf and unicorn stories so yeah for sure um so that's so that's cool so once you were kind of able to pin that theme down and stuff like um uh how did you kind of hone down a story? Because, uh, you know, I instantly uh, think of the other challenge we've all been kind of facing. I don't know if for you it was as intimidating as for, like, Corey or Scott or myself or, like, I think pretty much everybody we've had on so far um, where, like, trying to get a whole story told in four pages. Yeah. Like, did that – was that a struggle at all? Well, it, it was the – when I – when I first found out I was going to be in it, uh, I had that idea for the Bigfoot and the Dogman uh, story, but I was like, I really don't want to do it because I didn't want to draw a werewolf-looking creature. Yeah. And uh, because of the uh, contract that we we had to sign, uh, I sent my camera it's a personal email because I I had an idea for a story. Yeah. Which, uh, no, I'll go ahead and say what it was, but uh, I was like, I think this pushes the border of uh, what was allowed, and it, it was going to be kind of a Willy Wonka type story, at, where they go through looking at all these different creatures, and then they find the most mythical creature of all, an uh, honest politician. Then, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a good it, bet. It, because uh, there was no politics allowed. Uh, Mike said it, it was good, but uh, he had to refuse it. But, uh, which which I understood completely on that. But that's kind of a tough. Yeah. One. I don't know where I would stand on that decision because it's not. You're not making uh, like a. I mean, I guess it's sort of political, but you're not. You're not making it. You know, any one side of the aisle or anything. It's pretty universal, but yeah, it's kind of like a lawyer joke, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's a good bit though. I would I would definitely tag that for later because that's a, that's not bad material for like a joke, yeah. like a pretty pretty solid story. You know? Yeah, yeah. I've got notebooks full of little stories that it's mm -hmm. like I'll probably never get to all of them, but yeah, it's like yeah, yeah I know. I know what you mean. I'll get that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think you're preaching to a a pretty green choir on that because it's you know um, we talk about this all the time, but it's like as you start making these things, the the horror and beauty of it is that you know that blank page suddenly becomes just um, not really so intimidating because of the fact that you just end up with like more ideas flowing as you're generating ideas. And then you hit this like kind of breaking point where you're so limited on time that like it's just more of a time to get them all down kind of struggle, which is usually the opposite of when you're first kind of starting out where you're like, what's the perfect story? And then it's like you get going on a story and you're like, well, I'm into this, but I really want to do this wacky, you know, dystopian future story. You know, like there's a million stories we all want to tell. Um, so actually that in mind, um, once you were kind of, once that one story was kind of um, like out of the equation, how'd you kind of settle on what you're working on now for the story? Uh, uh, basically, I couldn't think of another story. Uh, yeah, I kept playing around with, because I wanted to do a Loch Ness Monster one, and uh, Ooh, there was a couple others that I wanted to do, but it was like I just couldn't come up with the story. Then uh, when I worked on the one, uh, the Michigan Dogman and the Bigfoot one, which I still don't have a title for it yet. I'm still messing with that. But the when I was working on it, after I wrote it out, it was going to be, it had probably been about six to eight pages uh, the way I wanted to do it. Cause it's kind of a, like a Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck kind of uh, storyline, you know, just that, uh, the way they picked on each other. Yeah, and, uh, my brother-in-law actually said uh, "Foghorn Leghorn" and the dog uh, nice. was was what he thought of. But... Both prime examples of Looney Tunes bits that I liked. Um, it's funny, my wife and I were just talking about Looney Tunes because I was realizing like we gotta get my like I gotta show my son some of that classic uh, Looney Tunes stuff because it was so well crafted, you know, and like some of the background mm -hmm. work and just animation so incredible. Um, but then, like, I was also, like, then again, him not being familiar will spare him that moment where you're just, like, just, like, I just want one day, just let him eat Tweety. Just <laughs> let that little turd get eaten, <laughs> you know? Why, why doesn't yeah. he ever catch the Roe Brother? Why doesn't he catch the There's uh, another it, one, it, yeah. It, he, on. actually, he actually did catch the Road Runner one time. For uh, real? Uh, yeah. Uh, they, ran, they ran through some pipes that kept getting smaller and when they came out they were micro sized so they turned around and ran back through the roadrunner grew but wiley e. coyote didn't and he grabbed a hold of their leg uh, the roadrunner's leg then he just looked and he, he held up a sign that says okay you want me to catch them now what <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time i've ever seen him catch them but he didn't that's good. I didn't. I don't know. Like this is interesting. Now I'm gonna have to go through that. Yeah, I think I heard about that because I did a. I did one of my Evil Genius. Actually, the first Evil Genius Hall of Fame video I did was on Wiley e. Coyote. So I think I do remember that in my research and everything. Um, but I don't know. I mean, is there other, anything else as far? Because I know we want to get into the actual topic that you want yeah. to bring up. So I, is there anything else as far as the the 100s or the challenge that you wanted to mention before we move into the topic? No, uh, I'm just amazed at the how, you know, like you know, I reached out to Marshall Lee uh, this past week because I got a the digital tablet, same as he did, and he was able to answer questions. And uh, I've reached out to you, Scott, and uh, you've answered the questions I had. It's like everybody's willing to work together and uh, it, when I've done this in the past in a for filmmaking it you know everybody's like oh that's my trade secret type yeah thing. I, I don't believe in trade secrets but and then, and then I mean that's kind of a good lead-in because um, you you know you've got a YouTube channel now 
relatively yeah. small and you wanted to, you know, talk about, you know, talk about the topic of, you know, how to improve it, how to, you know, how to improve your videos and all that kind of stuff. And so, I mean, that's, that's kind of a good lead into what we're doing now. And I don't, you know, I have no problem sharing any of that stuff and that's kind yeah. of what we're here for. And that's what this community is all about. So, I mean, and that's the good thing about, I've heard different things about other, you know, uh, disciplines or different trades or whatever, where they they do have those kind of secrets. And I just, I don't, I don't believe in that stuff at all because I mean, if you're worried about that, then, then, uh, you must not be doing very good work because uh, that, you know, you, I could explain how to do every single thing, but it's up to the person who I'm explaining to, to implement that and take all those steps right. and put it together. And nine, you know, unfortunately nine times out of 10 people, they're just not going to do all that. They're not going to put in the effort and you have to put in the effort, whether you know how to do yeah. it or not, you got to put in that effort. So that's a big, be before we even get started, that's the biggest thing I could say about YouTube is that, First of all, I think you have to love it because it is not, I mean, and it's, it's deceiving because you see these people with, you know, all these subscribers and stuff and, and yeah. sometimes just, and, you know, you know, you'll see like a 15 year old kid who is like, you know, 3000, 5000 subscribers or even more. And you're like, and, you know, sometimes those things can happen, you know, just it seems like out of nowhere, yeah. but, um, but you don't know the whole story even with that, but, but it's not always that easy. So I think the main thing is you have to love to do it. You can't really, if you're going into it with like, Oh, I want to be a YouTube star or I want to make money off of YouTube. Yeah. Pr probably not the best thing to, to go into it. So, um, I guess since you brought up the topic, I guess the first thing that I'm, oh, yeah. I'm Go ahead, right. Josh. Before we dip in, yeah, yeah, I want to keep all the people in the chats and watching this invested. Oh yeah, sorry guys. By, by promising one thing, by the end of this stream, if you bear with us this whole time, right? You, you go before you bear with us. You go support that Kickstarter. You go buy some Matt's awesome comics, Matthew's comics. Um, but after that, you know, just hang in there because we're gonna reveal the biggest trade secret of all. But, we are um, okay. Well, just, yeah. that's up to Josh. The one thing we've is. all been holding close to our chest, and we're just we're really <laughs> scared to reveal because none of us are transparent at all. Well, you better remember that because I, yes, you know, I'll remind me. About and so, and again, because you, you, you address uh, the people in the chat, you address the people in the chat. But I just want to make make it clear that the the Kickstarter is not up yet. It won't be up till Tuesday. So I but. I know this is mainly more for people later on and okay. maybe build the hype on that Kickstarter going up on Tuesday. But my point is, there will be a trade secret revealed at the end of this broadcast. Okay, so other than that, I agree 100%. There's, it, it's kind of silly to have transparency. And I will say, um, as much as I'm prone to kind of interruption and kind of over-talking and stuff, I'm probably not going to participate as much because out of all of us, I think Scott is the like 100% most qualified guy in, in this group right now to kind of answer your questions. Cause he's had like a, a fairly substantial spike recently on YouTube and gone from like a, a fairly impressive amount of subscribers to like a, a, a fairly significant one. And once again, it's all in the eye of the beholder, but, um, but so like, I'm really like, I'll be asking all, Scott a lot of questions too, Matthew, because it's uh, YouTube's a whole can of worms and stuff. So, okay. Yeah. And I, okay. I, I just want to say, yeah, because I mean, you say it's in the eye beholder because it really is because I don't think there was really any spike. I think for me, I mean, there was time a time a while back where I had a video that kind of did a lot better than my other videos and that yeah. helped me a little bit. But for the most part, it's been a steady progression. And, yeah. and like I was saying, I mean, you can't really compare anyone's channel to anyone else's for the most part because I've been on YouTube for over, I don't know, probably like six years now and I hit, I just hit 10,000 subscribers. You know, some people it. <laughs> some people would have gave, given up a long time ago if it took that long to do that. So, yeah. um, and then you know, some people it may even take longer. So it's you can't really, really kind of compare that stuff. Um, but I've you know I've learned a lot doing this, and I've been another important thing is uh, just consistency. I've been, in those six years, or it might be more now. I don't know, but I I put up at least one video a week for, for that amount of time. I don't think there's ever been a week that didn't go by. So if that, if that intimidates you, 
Um, <laughs> and you don't have to necessarily put one out every week or whatever, but, but I think you have to be consistent because I've seen, you know, yes. friends of mine who, you know, they'll put up videos for a while and they'll fall off and then they'll come back and it's kind of, you know, you see those ups and downs and they may not, they may not grow as much because they, they're maybe not as consistent, but um, I guess so Matthew, the question I want to ask you is kind of what, what, why, why YouTube, why do you want to do YouTube kind of what's, what's your goal? What's ultimately, what are you looking to do with YouTube? Yeah. Well, I, I always uh, like YouTube. Uh, my brother-in-laws and I set up a YouTube account when we were doing filmmaking uh, years ago. Uh, one of them starting to post more stuff on that, that channel now. But, you know, for me, when I was doing the filmmaking, I was behind the camera and directing it few times I, I was actually in it but uh but like now for youtube you know i'm got the camera pointed at myself trying to film all this stuff by myself and yeah you know, i mean i've been amazed by scott's work for about three years now i think it is but uh it, the way i way i first uh, got a, found out about the 100s was uh, i was following somebody's sketchbook tour they did a uh, uh i forget what was even in the sketchbook but uh, i saw another one of their videos where they said 100 days of making comics and they had not got very far just maybe like day seven or something like that and then they fell off and then they came back for like day 12 and then nothing i was like well yeah uh, it's like man i want to see more of this and uh, on the side panel uh, there was this one this one particular one that stood out to me, it, I, when I saw it, I thought this guy's either crazy or I'm, re <laughs> I'm really, or I'm really gonna like it. And he was in a green lab coat, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I, I clicked on it and uh, just been amazed by everything that Scott's been doing with whether it was the hundreds or uh, just the hacks or anything else that you've done. Uh, very, very informative, and you know, to me, at some point, I would like to be at that, you know, producing stuff like that. And uh, yeah. Marshall, Marshall Lee's another one that's been putting out great content. Yeah, and, Definitely. yeah and I feel like um, Marshall, like um, I've always enjoyed Marshall's videos, and he's a really thoughtful person. And and it, one of the things I really like about Marshall is he's really humble too. Mm -hmm. Um, so it makes for this like really interesting content, but for some reason last year, um, just like having followed him for a, while, a long time now, it's like, it's just, I've, I feel like I've been seeing him hit this like stride yeah. where he's just, yeah. he, it's like, it, it feels like he kind of found his voice. And, um, mm -hmm. and one thing Marshall's always had a gift for, like he'll, he, he occasionally will have these moments where he shows up. In like um, just even in the comments, so leave like a comment on Artcasters, and or or on Forty Eight Hour Art Check, and it'll just be a question, and it's like the perfect prompt to start like a whole series of conversations, and so um, there there's a real gift to that, and like I think it's cool that that you connected with that too. I don't know if you've noticed yeah. that, but I just feel like especially this year, just like everything he puts out is like fascinating and interesting i can't stop the videos you know yeah uh, i actually he did a one hour comic book challenge and uh, i thought that was interesting and uh, i did the same thing and uh, which i didn't finish mine in within the hour but uh, uh, i know i know he started getting where uh, i'm not sure how many other people attempted it and uh, yeah but yeah, just in the past year, it seems like he's really picked up and you know, a lot of informative stuff. And yeah, yeah, and I think it it does. I think it does take one of the things that it, it's going to take is it's going to take you finding kind of your stride. Right. Um, like if you go back to I don't care who it is, almost anyone. If you go back and look at their early videos, you're going to see a world of difference. If you go back to my first video, like my first 100 days. It was kind of like I, I I actually went back a while ago and I was surprised that from the beginning I still had we'll get into this too as far as a little bit of branding when you do your videos but I still had the same intro where it was like greetings people of the internet but back then it was like 
greetings people of the internet i'm scott with circle yeah. <laughs> and now it's like <laughs> greetings people you know and you, you kind of learn to do that and 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 the other thing you were talking about is kind of like this guy who's kind of easy that you're either going to think this guy's the craziest guy or, or, and I think a lot of people probably have that reaction, especially in the beginning to my videos, because it is kind of, you know, who is this guy, this guy in his late forties, just being a total goofball. And, and, but I think, I think once people can kind of get past that, because in, in some ways it's kind of a gimmick, but, it, but I, but I, you know, I wholeheartedly, I embrace this whole thing because this, I mean, it's what I love. I mean, it, you had talked about, Matthew, how you, you know, did video. I mean, when I was a kid growing up before YouTube, I I had, I took my dad's big giant camcorder and we made, you know, SNL parodies and all that kind of stuff. And before vlogging was a thing, before there was even such thing as a reality show, I did this thing where it's like, here's the day, uh, my day in the life type thing. And just follow me around. It was so, I mean, so embarrassing, but, huh? but I would do that kind of stuff. And I, I, you know, so, so, I mean, I just kind of gravitate to that and I just kind of found this thing that kind of embodies kind of what I am. And I think if you watch it, once you get past that initial, like this guy's kind of, you know, he's got the green lab coat and everything. Once you get mm -hmm. past that, and I think you see that, you know, in a lot of ways, I know what I'm talking about that I have experience do this and I'm, I'm actually giving out value. Um, I think people, whether they ha are initially turned off by that, I think a lot of people, they're like, okay, there's something else here. So I think, I think all of that and, and you're gonna, you're gonna, as you go, you're gradually gonna get more comfortable. And the one thing, and I have talked about this before, but the good thing about when you're first starting off and, and you're still kind of finding that stride is that mm. typically you're not gonna have a huge following, but that's good because right. this is the time to allow you to experiment, to make mistakes, to learn yeah. while you don't have a lot of eyes on you. You have just enough eyes that, you know, people are holding you accountable, that you can hopefully, if you love it enough, you're going to continue to do the video and get past that point where it just seems like, well, not a whole lot of people are watching. But the other thing I want to say is like, if you've got, if you've got 12 views, I mean, just think if you were, if you were out, you know, in public and you're saying, Hey, check out my stuff. And 12 people are around you watching. Yeah. That's kind of a big deal. So yeah. don't discount the, you know, don't discount that as far as like, well, no one's really watching my videos. It just, it really just does take time. But, but the good thing is, like I said before, when you're first starting off and, and you did the hard part already, you started a lot of mm. people. That's the hardest thing. I see so many things like, Oh, I want to start a YouTube channel, but I don't know what to do. I got to get, uh, what kind of cameras do I need? What kind of this do I need? Yeah. Well, all you need is something you probably already have, and that's your cell phone, um, and, or a webcam, or whatever. Don't worry about if you're if you're wanting to start a YouTube channel. Don't worry about all this other stuff because again, not a lot of people are going to watch those videos in the beginning. When I started, I just had my I just had my camera, and I remember back then it was it was an older iPhone. It didn't have the selfie. It didn't flip around. It had the one camera, so I yeah. couldn't see if I was in the frame. In my earliest videos, I didn't, I wasn't even on camera, and it was all shaky. Like I was doing, I was showing how to do like how to build props and things. And some of my earlier videos, I was kind of nervous about being on camera, so I just kind of showed it was like the camera was all shaky and and all that stuff. But that's a big learning experience. But the main thing yeah. is that you started. And now you can just continue to get better and better at that. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Well, one benefit I had was when we did the filmmaking. You know, I've got all the equipment mm -hmm. still here with me. So, I mean, I'm using one of the lights uh, right now uh, on me. And then, uh, you know, the the video I just put up. Uh, I use my best camera on. The very first digital camera I have is what I have over my drawing desk uh, for some of the videos I've done. And, uh, I mean, I, I've already had the equipment, so it, that was a big help for me. But uh, oh. which uh, I do have the movies that we actually made. Oh, awesome! <laughs> there. So. Very cool. Awesome. So yeah, I do want to, I want to talk about that video you just put out and I, I do want to kind of talk about, and again, uh, one thing you want to do is play, I think, play to your strengths. So you have mm -hmm. a background doing films and things. You have that equipment. That's great. If you have it, great, but don't let that be a hindrance to you. If you don't have all right. that stuff, you got to find out what, what, 
you know, what your strengths are and you got to kind of play to those strengths. And the most important thing I think is, you know, kind of find your niche too. find, find who your audience is, what makes you stand out? What makes you different from the other people? Because there's so many yeah. other people on YouTube. I mean, we're all doing comics, but you know, how many other people are doing like are the mad scientist guy doing comics? You got to kind of find your yeah. thing and, and, and you don't, and, it's got to be it's sort of got to be natural too i mean i've always been a big fan of science fiction and anything with i've always like i used to, i created a children's show back in the days and this and the villain of that sh that children's show was a mad scientist so i've always kind of loved the idea and it goes back to frank dr frankenstein and stuff i've always loved that so that's yeah. that's something that i can kind of relate to and that it kind of tied all my whole brand together everything that i like to do robots aliens zombies where do you find those things maybe like a clandestine lab that experiments with all that kind of stuff so it kind of tied it into everything it just it was just kind of the perfect fit so you got to find that you don't want to you don't want to just kind of do something for the sake of oh that's kind of a good gimmick even though that could work but I think you do kind of have to find kind of what works for you and everything and, and sometimes yeah. that takes a little while like when I first started off my first round of 100 days I didn't have the lab coat I didn't have that whole persona um, it took a while and then you know and it gradually and don't you know don't be afraid to just you know start maybe testing things out and see how people respond to it and everything like that. But as far as your video, um, yeah, I could definitely tell you had some, like a background and I, I love that cause, and I don't want to give too much away, but there's a, yeah. there's a, there's a kind of a bit towards the end. You gotta, this is yeah. your a review. And by the way, thank you. Cause you did a little review on young and the dead. Um, but you, you kind of did a, a thing where you brought in this, I don't know how much you want to talk about it or not, but, <laughs> We can talk about the whole thing. Okay, That's, awesome. So, so yeah, so you, you, you kind of brought in this alien, this alien character, which I assume was probably you, right, in the costume? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you, so obviously there was some some trickery and everything because you're on one camera and you kind of did this, the you know, cutting back and forth and everything. But what was so great about it, I think it worked kind of well with your personality. It was, and I think Gaspar, who's in the in the yeah. chat, <laughs> even commented on this. That it yeah, was, he did. It was. It was so good because it was kind of like this deadpan type reaction like like it wasn't even it was like this alien shows up and he's got a package for you and it's like and you know it wasn't even like oh like wow this is weird there's an alien here like that's probably would have been my take on it like oh whoa, what's going on here but it was just kind of like well that's weird there's this, there's this <laughs> alien right it, it just works it just kind of works so well and then you know, I could, you could see you did some special effects with coming him appearing and everything, and the voice the voice was great. Yeah, you, know, you did some sound effects on the voice, so I couldn't even uh, uh, necessarily tell that it was you doing the voice. But yeah, yeah, uh, I do a few different uh, impersonation voices. Okay, awesome. that, was, that was just my voice. I didn't change anything on that one. Oh, really? There wasn't a sound effect on it. No, was it? Oh, that was okay. Well, there you go. That was great. I, I thought there was some 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 uh, sound effects or something on that. So, but yeah. So again, kind of play to your strength and kind of find find what works for you. Um, if you're good at editing, you know, uh, uh, do that. I mean, you want to keep. You know, you obviously, you want to. The the main thing with YouTube is to get, is try to keep people you know engaged in your content. So anytime you can yeah. do that kind of thing, um, that's definitely a plus. So, yeah. Got it. I, I want to chime in here because you touch on like so many like interesting things. But one of the things I wanted to highlight um, was the fact that like, you know, you were talking about how like maybe the, the lab coat like turns people off like Scott, you know, and um, I don't think it does at all. And I think you touched on why, because the thing is, I usually don't go for like gimmicks or or like cheese or anything unless it's like pure. And there's something pure and authentic about it because when you're wearing a lab coat, like I know you like mad scientists. I, I can just mm -hmm. feel it from watching the video. And, and what what you were just describing about Matthew, you know, I think why that works is because like I think Matthew really likes B films. I, I can just yeah. tell. Yeah. And it's yeah. like so like you can't fake that. And so and and that you know transcends just videos it's like with art too like i love b movies it's this weird polar opposite thing where it's like the art i'm drawn to create is like the stuff that has a very small market and there's no <laughs> there's not a lot of viable options for it 
But at the same time, I also love like B movies and B movie posters, and I've loved them since I was a child. And so, when I do like a riff on that for like a shirt, I think that's one of the, the legs like legs up I have, because like if I'm gonna do like a fake comic cover of Captain Obvious, I'm not gonna just do that with a slap down thing that says Captain Obvious. I'm gonna do a whole riff on it. Because, like, I love comics, I love jokes, I love humor, and so I'll do things like where, um, you know, the character's commenting on being in a comic and, like, all of this stuff. So you're looking at the shirt and it has, like, three levels of humor um, instead of just the one that most people would be like, oh, I just want it to look like a comic book. So it has that one hit, you know, thing, which is less resilient. So, like, people who really love B-movies, you know, to me, that's a perfect example the person who doesn't love a B movie will have a reaction like, Oh no, like to the, you know, um, to like the appearance of like, you know, some strange creature in, in your room. But if you're really hip to it, you, you might want the kind of subtle reaction. Cause it's kind of bringing to mind like late night, like, um, like I think of cable access stuff, like, um, like monster piece theater was one that used to show up here, but like almost every city had one where it's like, you know, people who somehow got a cable access thing and are like, like, you know, are on a couch and there's puppets and all this awesomeness. And then they show a really bad horror movie, you know? Um, so to me, it's like, um, I think that's touching on something. I think for growth in any creative field, it's like you, you really don't want to end up in the trap of doing unauthentic stuff, you know? Um, because the authentic stuff's also not only going to grow, but it's like now that Scott's like, like he's described, it's been a slow build, but it's like now that his channel's growing bigger and bigger, it's like, I don't think it's going to be as hard for you to maintain that growth or that consistency because you're doing something that's authentic, you know? Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you hated that lab coat, if you were just like, I hate this lab coat and then you put it on and you have to do that and then it grows, you're like kind of stuck in this role yeah. of doing something you dislike. I worry about that too with certain content because I'll, sometimes I'll experiment with some other things and I'm like, if this hits and I have to keep doing this, I'm not going to be happy. So, but um, I don't want to get too much into that, but I do, I do kind of, I, I like that idea. I mean, I think Matthew, I think that might be the niche you want to kind of go into yeah. is sort of that B movie type vibe um yeah. with your youtube channel i think that's perfect especially right. with you know because you're so big on the cryptids which are a lot of times that right. you know the, we're dealing with mythical creatures in these kind of monster movies and stuff but right. that might be yeah that definitely might be the way to go to kind of embrace that so yeah uh, i thought about it and uh, i was just like i gotta do something and uh the uh, i actually got the package from gaz but uh you know, it had been a few weeks uh, that I had it, and I, I still hadn't opened it up yet. And I, I do saw that, that too. <laughs> I wait for I saw, the time for the video. Yeah. When I saw that package, I was just like, I was like, I'm going to try something totally different. Yeah. It was like, either it'll do good or it's just going to look stupid. And it's like, I'm just going to try it. And you know, I've I've had a great reaction to it. So I was yeah. like, yep. But one idea I. I had actually before I did this was trying to do like a 40, well, it wouldn't be a 48 hour art check, but it'd probably be like once a week. But I was like, if I do that, I have to play both parts of that. And because oh, uh, I was going to That would be have, hilarious, though. I don't know uh, if I've seen that, like with somebody uh, doing a split split screen where they're checking in with themselves. On That's great. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, I've had a few ideas and I, I've jotted them down that if I do it, this is what I'm going to do, but you know, I kind of like doing it just to keep myself accountable, uh, putting it out there. So, uh, because uh, I just really enjoy the 48 hour art check. Uh, most of the time I'm drawing when uh, you guys are on, but I, that's, I try that's, what it's, that's what it's made for, man. I mean, same with art casters. We hope like everybody in the chats is like joining in and it's kind of like a late night at it, you know, like that, that, like if you're in art school or you're up late with a friend and like you're drawing comics together, you know, it's like, that's the vibe. I think Scott and I always try to maintain speaking of in the chats, just if you guys are watching, 
It's like there's a whole world going on here. It's like <laughs> I, we usually try to kind of <laughs> chime in on the chats, but it's like it's moving, man. Um, one thing I wanted to kind of highlight was um, Mitchell's art adventures. He brought up um, for my first videos, I was totally unprepared. The desk I was drawing on wasn't sturdy, so it would be like rock back and forth while I was drawing. It's so embarrassing. And I can chime in for that. And honestly, it was Scott. Um, Scott's one of the first guys who kind of connected with me when I tried this whole endeavor. And like my, my you know, a channel is small and I haven't really focused on it heavily because um, what's weird is I've actually just started really enjoying it. Like I'm, when I, when I started, I think I was looking at numbers and stats and stuff, but there, there was, and I, I think this will happen for most people if they really enjoy the process where it's like, um, there was this moment where it clicked where, um, like I may not have found, I don't know if I found a niche or a voice, but I do know there was this moment where I, I think I was like doing a vlog and I was talking to the camera and I realized like, I didn't feel like I was talking to a camera. I felt like I was talking to like all these people who are showing up in the chats right now, which is like part of our community. And, um, it, but like, but yeah, when I started, it's like, you know, I had this crappy camera. Um, I, I didn't even have a decent enough cell phone to kind of make it work. And so I was just trying to make this thing work. And I kept like putting, like editing it to be black and white because I felt self-conscious, like, you know, about how I'd look on camera and stuff like that. Now it's like when we live stream and stuff, I, I just, um, I feel like it's just this beautiful kind of fun conversation. It doesn't feel like I'm on camera. And, um, and that's like, that's kind of a beautiful thing. And then the thing I've loved about it is seeing this community, like meeting people like you, Matthew, you know, through this, um, it, it's, it's like, it's taken on a whole different thing than like if the channel grows or whatever, great. Um, you know, and I think we all have, I think this is the unique thing you were describing this too with the movie thing, you know, where yeah. you're saying in film, like people kind of hold their cards to their chest. And what's weird about the hundreds, man, it's like, it's one of the few communities that I've seen. And I think this, you know, would be because a lot of the art cast series community is, is in the hundreds or involved in the hundreds or have heard about it a million times. Um, but it's like, the neat thing is like, everybody's pretty open it's a weird dynamic and it's like it's a great community and i think that's one thing too that scott you kind of touched on but maybe you could touch on more but it's like the building of community is like it seems like to me that's the real value of youtube is like um building community like yeah. you know yeah i, I want to say one thing one thing and or kind of I have some kind of notes and things that I wanted to talk about, so we're kind of moving around. Oh, hit but, but one of the things that I wanted to talk about was um, as far as like, you know, growth and building your audience, the main thing you want to do is you need to engage in your community. Now, obviously, yeah. I think most people, I don't know too many people when they're first starting off that, that if they get a comment that they ignore it, you definitely want to do that. You don't want to do that. Now, I, you know, it's even now, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know if I get like the people with the same amount of subscribers, if I, it seems like I may get less comments than maybe somebody else with my certain, my same amount of subscribers. I don't know, but I know a lot of people that, that have the amount of subscribers I have don't respond to every comment. And I do that. And I'm going to kind of hopefully continue to do that as long as I can, as long as it's feasible. Um, and what's weird is that a lot of times, you know, people will look at a, a video that, you know, someone, a video that maybe has a hundred thousand views on it that I put out and they'll kind of comment in the comment section like, Oh, he's this, or oh, like, I like, I'm not there. Like I, I would like, I, I'm too big to, to respond. And then I will, and maybe sometimes it might be a little snarky or it might be something like, you know, cause you're just a kind of, if you're not expecting the person to pay attention to that comment, you kind of just, you may say something that you normally wouldn't do. Like if, like that's kind of the anonymity of YouTube. Yeah. But when you respond back and you said, and you know, I might say, oh, sorry, this video didn't really work out for you. And, you know, this is kind of what I was trying to do. And people are so surprised that you commented back. It's like almost they apologize. Sometimes a lot of times they sort of 
backtrack and apologize and so oh, I'm yeah, I didn't really mean that, but you know. So I mean, a lot of times people aren't expecting to come. And I think that's a big part of you know growing that community is be responsive and get back to people and and you know and engage in the community. And I mean, and that and the community is gonna give back to you because a lot of the ideas and, and there's there are people who give me ideas and I encourage this so much. If you have ideas for things you want me to talk about in the video, please yeah. let me know because I mean, I, I mark that stuff down and I try to get to it. Right now, there's a lot of other stuff because I'm doing the 100 Day Challenge, so a lot of my videos are that. So there hasn't been a lot of topic specific things other than what's going on in the challenge. And then I'm going to do my Kickstarter, so a lot of the videos will have to do a Kickstarter kind of. But there's a lot of other things that I want to get to. And sometimes, you know, sometimes the hardest thing about making videos is like, oh, what do I talk about? Well, if you get that community, they can kind of help you out and they can tell you this is what, you know, if people are saying, yeah, you should do a video on this and that's what people want. So assuming that it still fits kind of with what you want to do and your brand and everything, then you, that's kind of the kind of videos you should do. So um, so definitely, you know, to grow that community, I mean, you've got to you've got to interact with people in the chat and everything. And I'm, I'm good at that in YouTube. I'm not always the best on like Instagram and some for some reason some other social platforms it seems like certain comments go in different areas and they get hidden so a lot of times in Facebook it seems like there's two or three different places that that people like there's private messages and then there's there's you know public messages and all these different things and sometimes I don't see all those comments and I feel really bad when there's a comment that for whatever reason I don't see and I don't get back to right away um, but that's, I guess that's something I got to work with on some of these other, um, you know, these other it, social media things. But. Yeah, Facebook is particularly terrible with yeah. that. I remember a yeah. case where it was like, I never check like the private messages on my fan page for Joshua Kimball illustrations. Um, be, be, for, because for a while, it's like they don't have a great notification for it. So I was kind of just sweeping through and I was like, hmm, I, I just want to check here. There was an email that had been sent like two years before, and it was like one of the sweetest emails I've ever read where it was like it was mentioning like a piece of art and the person had gotten it like tattooed on them. And like and like it was the coolest, like most uplifting thing. And I was like, I wish I had gotten this two years ago, you know, so I had to write this email about like, I don't know how this got lost in the feed, you know, but like you're really valuable and that's amazing. Um, and that, like, I do wish one thing I'll, you know, YouTube has some downsides and stuff, but yeah, I totally agree with Scott. Like one thing I'll attest to YouTube for is it's like, it's very good at notifying you when there's comments and, um, at, at being trackable and, and being able to kind of maintain it. Cause like, once again, I don't think any, um, anyone who's approaching it from sincerity, like wants to like, you know, like we like having people like our stuff. And so you want to encourage that because it encourages us. And then like Scott was saying too, um, there've been a million times when Scott and I like um, are doing, you know, art casters and we're kind of hitting, maybe we're just exhausted because, you know, we're human beings. Right. So it's like, we're pulling everything together to kind of do this and commit to it. And it'll kind of hit this dull space. And then someone in the chats will chime in and open up this window and enable us to like actually hit really cool topics we wouldn't have even thought of. And um, that happens like more times than I can imagine. So it's like that, um, yeah, that's, I'm just seconding what Scott said, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, and, and the chat, the chat's gonna help you out a lot too. I mean, as, it, yeah. as, as it continues to grow and things too, because I mean, just, I don't know it was today or yesterday. Um, I mean, I got a comment that was just like, I, I we, you know, and I, I get these from time to time. And luckily, I don't know if it's just in, just the vibe I put out or whatever, but I don't get a whole lot of negative comments. But I get when I get these comments that like, you know, you, you don't know what your videos have done. They're really helpful. The, you know, the advice that you're giving us and everything. And I mean, that's just like that kind of stuff just brightens my day, and especially like a couple, you know, uh, well, it was, you know, over a month now, but like, I broke up with my girlfriend and I was in this real bad space and I'm still, you know, trying to get out of it, but just all the, just the positive feedback and, and yeah. the, the things that I got from, from the community. I mean, that, that stuff really helped to be honest. So, 
I just want to thank everyone for that, you know. So it's it's a it's a two way street, you know. It's a community. Yeah. So, and, that, uh, and, and that's one of the things I liked about the the video I had just done was a uh, guys chimed in and was like, "You seem awful calm." <laughs> I forget exactly how he phrased it. But like, yeah. you seem awful calm to have an unexpected uh, alien show up or something like that. And I was like, like, well, I didn't really think about that, but that, but it worked, that, and that's what I noticed yeah. too. And it was, it was, it was like a good bit, you know. Yeah. So, and it's, yeah, I think why I liked it because it was different than maybe what I would have done because I would have went yeah. over the top, but but you're just kind of like, oh, that's kind of weird. What's you know, <laughs> no, big, no big deal. No, I, mean, I like that, but that's but that I think that that deals with personalities, and that's why you kind of have to go with your personality as a strength and yeah. just and and double down on that. So. Uh, so let me see. I got well. I, I'm, I just got a little different things that I'm talking about that I wrote down as far as you know. Um, as far as we talked, we talked about when you're start. Just start your video. Don't worry so much about all the production and everything. And you'll gradually, you know, especially expenses and stuff. Because assuming that you do have a cell phone that has a camera and everything, that's all you need to start off with. I mean. You know, as you go, and you, you kind of have a background in filmmaking and everything, uh, Matthew, so um, this isn't a necessarily directed to you, but um, but as you go, I mean, and there's, there's and the great thing about YouTube is that it's also a wealth of, of you know, information that you can search this stuff, because like I, when I was first starting off, I looked at budget tips for like, you know, how do I get like great studio lighting on the cheap? And like, so I, you know, one of the things was just, um, the indoor lights, because a lot of the lights that we have, and I kind of switched basically throughout most of my house, I, I took out all the sort of regular kind of that soft light mm -hmm. um, that kind of gives that, that yellow glow and switched it all with like, you know, the outdoor lighting. And those, mm -hmm. you know, and those are, they're harder to find, but but you can find them at like a Walmart or whatever. But, but uh, if you get some of those daylight lights, yeah, go ahead, Matthew. Yeah, I was going to say, I, it, in my studio here, most of the lights are now the uh, daylight lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a little getting. It was, it was a little hard at first because it was because yeah. just the way my my house was before was kind of like oh, it's kind of this kind of everything. Most everything in my house is kind of like darkly decorated. My walls are a little dark, painted dark, and it was kind of that that soft light and everything. So it was, it was kind of, when I put it when I changed all the indoor lighting or the outdoor lightings. It was kind of like, whoa, this is super bright, but but you get used to it and everything. But but you know that's super. That's just changing regular light bulbs, and then I had some like just kind of freestanding lights that I got from from Target, and just to kind of put a filter on them, I just took and I learned this from a YouTube video. I just took like the white plastic bags, and you got to make sure that you you've got fluorescent lights or something that's not going to heat up because you don't want to start yeah. a fire. But you know when I was filming, I would just put one of put a a grocery bag over it um, to kind of dim that light. And, and, you know, now I've got like, you know, I've got the things with the umbrellas and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you can find that stuff cheap too. You just kind of got to look around. Um, but, you know, don't let that be a hindrance to you. Kind of just start off and then gradually do better. Um, the one thing you do want to, I think the most important thing probably is that your audio is good. Um, cause yeah. that audio will just yeah. destroy everything right. more than the video. I, people, I think worry a lot about video, uh, worry more about the audio if you can. Yeah. So that's the yeah. first thing you probably yeah, that, learn. Yeah. Uh, I learned that when we were doing the video movies, uh, some of the ones before we started making movies to send to film festivals, you know, we watch them now and we still cringe at just because the audio was so horrible. And that was one of the first things we fixed and. I mean, I, I agree that the audio is a big, important part of it. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and then, you know, other than, you know, there's a lot of other stuff that, you know, can kind of help grow your channel other than just the actual videos itself. Like, for instance, the, um, that when they go to your YouTube page, the channel, like the thumbnails, the descriptions, the mm -hmm. channel artwork. And it took me a while to kind of get that, like, um, and one of the things I, I, I know a lot of people do, I've seen it some of, on some of your videos, like I think your, um, your 100 Days of Making Comics video, and I've, I've 
I have people that I follow that make, you know, and, and I think Josh was guilty of this too when he was doing his 100s, but um, where it was, there wasn't any difference in the thumbnail other than to indicate that this is a different series. Yeah, it's like a there's, long time. There's, a, there's an artist that I follow that I love. I mean, I, I love his style and everything, but all his thumbnails look the same. He's got different series. Like you could tell, oh, this is part of that. But yeah. the problem is when I go to his channel, I don't know if I've seen this one or not because yeah. they all look the same. So that's one thing you, even if you have like, and you want to have what like your different series, you want to have a certain look to that. So people know, oh, this is part of that. But, um, but you also want something different in there. So they know, oh, this is, you know, and some of the description can help, but it's not always, it's still hard to remember. So that's yeah. why I usually try it when I do mine, I try to show something a little bit different. And sometimes I even worry about mine because usually it's just me in the lab coat and sometimes that can start to look the same, but in another way, that's good with branding because people can look at it and say, oh, it's that guy in the green lab coat again. As long as I have a different expression or something, something that stands out to make it different so people know that, oh, I haven't seen this one yet. You know? Yeah, that helped a lot too with advice and it's I still have yet to go back to like older videos and kind of up, update all the thumbnails, but I definitely had that where I, I was doing kind of very similar thumbnails for every single thing. And one of the problems is you're kind of preventing people from doing what the internet's made for, which is like just going down fun rabbit holes. And that's usually how you discover cool stuff online. But if you make it hard for people to go down that path, it's like, <laughs> I don't know, it's like at the beginning of Alice in Wonderland, if she like, you know, does everything, gets to the door and then the door is locked and there's no key. And you, at that point, the story's done, you know? Um, and, and, uh, and Scott, like your channel is remarkably good at that, where it's like anytime I want to kind of backtrack and be like, I'm going to watch some old Scott videos, you know, I'm like, I can go through the circ work stuff and just kind of dig back and back. And it's very easy to go, well, I've already watched this without having to like, like, look like what's the status bar on it? Like how far along in the video was it? It's like, I can just, you know, measure it by the, um, by the thumbnail and that's smart that's really smart yeah yeah and like i was saying all that kind of ch ch ties into like um your channel artwork and everything like like for me for a while it I really i think it just said circworks art labs but what does that mean to somebody who doesn't know what your thing is you yeah. know what your channel is about so finally i went i'm like well what what am i doing here what what is this about what how can i sum this up what i'm trying to do and basically, uh, I put the now I've got the tagline in there that says, um, I'm trying to remember what it says art, advice, and inspiration for mad creators. <laughs> so, you know, so, and that's basically what the channel is. I'm trying to give advice, I'm doing artwork, um, I'm trying to inspire people. Who am I trying to inspire? Mad creators. Are you a mad creator? Because that's another thing you kind of want if, you, if you're trying to build a community, you want. You a lot of people want that community to have a name, and a lot of you know the big YouTubers like, hey, what's up, fam, and this and all that, <laughs> you know. But you got to have your own thing, you know. Everyone's like fam right. or something like that, or or so, such and such nation or whatever like that. Um, for me, it's just, and I don't, I probably don't play this up enough, but you know, for me, it's like mad creators because, you know, if I like to tap into the idea of you know mad sciences combined with art. What, what is that? And I think I want it to be broad enough so it's not just artists, it's not just comic book artists, it's creators, anyone that wants to be creative. And to do this kind of thing, everyone's got to be a little bit crazy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's where that all comes in. So, you know, th that that's part of your branding and everything. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, you know, your your descriptions, you know, what, what's think what's going to make you click on a video what's going to entice you i mean you got to kind of in some ways you got to kind of think as a marketer what what's going to you know because one of the things that i i did wrong in the beginning um and even with the art cast is kind of like this but it's brief enough because in the beginning it says art like this video right now it'll say art cast 122 and then it'll or i mean yeah 120 172 and it'll say start start starting and growing a youtube channel and then it has the name of the guest. So um, it probably would make more sense to put starting and growing a YouTube channel first because that's the most. Yes, yeah. But Art Casters, you know, it's brief enough that I think you're going to see part of that other part. 
Yeah. Whereas like with my like 100 days of making comics, what I started to do instead of saying 100 days of making comics, and by the time you get to the actual crux of what the video is about, you know, it's it's often that you have to actually click on it to see. So I kind of flipped that around. So now I put what the topic is. So if I've got like if if I'm doing inking, it's going to be inking, and then 100 days of making comics or abbreviation of that, and then you know whatever else. So get make sure you get that you know. Whatever's going to people are going to want to click on the most. You want to get that up in your, you know, your uh, your description. Okay. Yeah, and 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 you're touching on something really important there too, which is applicable outside of videos, which is just an amazing skill to start developing. Anytime, like you know, we we talk a lot about commercial art on here and stuff too, and it's like anytime you're developing stuff, you're planning on selling. One of the most important questions that I find people have real, like, especially starting out, they have a really hard time answering is like, just objectively, are you able to kind of objectively step back and say you would buy what you just made? Yeah. Um, and that's, that's actually a question I used to ask students. And of course their first response is like, yeah, but it's funny because people's face would tell you whether they were being sincere. Yeah. Like a lot of the time, the um there's like different levels of communication there's like there's very literal verbal communication and then there's um communication that takes emotional intelligence to read that's like everything but the verbal and it's funny because you would see everything but the verbal saying oh hell no i wouldn't touch this thing <laughs> but they're expecting you to buy it and and that's um that's actually a really hard thing um even late into your art career it's easy to get so attached to something that you can't step back and go like would i even buy this you know and um and if you can actually like very honestly and objectively say yes um and like tying back to the youtube thing you know if you're like would i even watch this and you're like well you know objectively yeah i totally would <laughs> um then you're kind of you're in a good territory you know which which i think is fun so that's why you got to kind of chase those moments like where you know you're like what would happen if i just kind of have like a monster appear <laughs> like you know like that's a good kind of it's like you want to kind of chase those those fun moments like kind of chase the fun because if you had fun with the idea of it to where you wanted to make it um because you want to see it and you like Matthew, you've got an advantage over a lot of people starting out on YouTube because you've made movies and stuff and shorts. And so it's like yeah. you're used to that process of like realizing like it works if you're kind of there's this unspoken thing of like it, it works when you bring to it what you'd actually want to watch. Right. Um, not that you're always the market, but I'm just saying it's it's um it's a good rule of thumb and it's a good skill to develop that just goes across like outside of just videos, just with art in general, like, you know, if, if you wouldn't dig a, a, um, a logo, then, you know, like what's the likelihood that, you know, you're going to be a, a really honest salesperson, like selling it to a client, you know, whereas if you really like actually really like it, um, it's a lot, of, it's, it's a much more honest and easy sale. And then that's the kind of thing that, brings return viewers or return customers. So that's great. That's mm -hmm. Great, Scott. Yeah. Um, so another thing while we're kind of on the topic of like, what do we do to get people to kind of watch our videos? Um, you know, there's, this could be a whole, uh, you know, separate topic, but like SEO is a big thing. Um, and that can get complicated and everything, but at the core, it's, it's just, you know, filling in, you know, putting in your, your, your description and also your keywords and things like that mm -hmm. um, and you'll see like you'll see it like a big youtuber does they may not even bother with that because the algorithm has already you know chosen them as like oh watch this video um, us you know when you're starting out it's a little different so definitely don't don't you know make sure when you put a video out what's the video about put that in your keywords anything yeah. think like you know what are people searching for um, YouTube is the second biggest search engine there is so i mean people go on i do it all the time you go on youtube if you want to find it and i probably use youtube more than maybe even google as far as a search engine because i like if i want to learn something usually i like a video playing because that right. way i can listen to that video or whatever and kind of casually glance at it while i'm working 
um, because that's just kind of my workflow. So what kind of things are people searching, you know? So uh, as far as those keywords, um, another thing you want to do is it helps to do like long tail keywords. So people aren't going to just type in art in YouTube and then do a search most likely. Right. So if you put art, if you put comics, um, you know, it's got to be, there has to be more to it. Like what are people searching? Like how to make comics, yeah. um, indie comics, how to draw indie comics, and, you know, can kind of niche down that way you're going to kind of come up hopefully in those searches. And, um, and like, for instance, like my most popular videos are my art hack videos. So if you go into YouTube as a, you know, as a search and you right now you type in art hacks and that's a pretty broad, broad search. Um, but my videos are probably going to, you know, it kind of fluctuates. Sometimes I'll have, sometimes I have three, I got three art hack videos. Sometimes they'll all three show in there, some one, some, and they kind of move up and down. Sometimes I've had it where they were like number one in the search. I've had, you know, sometimes now they'll kind of, they'll drop down to around 10 or 12, but they'll kind of move around. But the thing is, you'll notice, you don't always have to be the biggest YouTube to get those big searches. Um, like if, for, for instance, if you were to type in, get a little niche down a little more, and if you were to type in comic art hacks, all three of my videos are gonna pop up, probably one, two, three, maybe four, <laughs> okay? So, I mean, that that's pretty specific. I don't know how many people are, are niching down that much, but there, there might be some people that are art um, or tips or whatever. I haven't really searched tips, but, but, you know, when you search art hacks for me to come up in that with the amount of other competition there are, and if you search art hacks right now and you'll see if I'm, maybe I'm like 12th down or something like that, but you look at the amount of views, like I have, well, I've got one that's, I think I've got one that's like got 10,000 views and I've got another one that's got like over 100,000 views. But yeah. if you look at the other videos that are in there below and above where I'm ranking, they're like million views, 300,000 views, 500,000 views. And if you look at the subscribers of those people, they're people with 1 million subscribers. They're people with like 300,000 subscribers. Yeah. And yet I'm still ranking up there at 10,000 subscribers. I'm still ranking up there with, with those people. Um, partially because I've, you know, I found that kind of niche, that comic, you know, and minor, mm -hmm. minor different than all those other ones. The other ones are more kind of like, you know, I don't know, they're more crafty. They're not as much. And if you look at a lot of the, those art hack videos you watch, they're like, yeah, this is kind of lame. Um, but with mine, if I can toot my own horn a little more, I get so many comments like, I knew I thought I was going to click on this. And I was going like, yeah, I know that. I know that. And I was and, I, and the comments are like, no, I was blown away. These are things that I haven't even heard of before. And I get those comments because I, I mean, I put a lot into it. And that's why I can't really I, it's hard for me. I couldn't really like duplicate that formula because I've kind of given away all my best secrets. And there's only so many different hacks that I know of, you know, and and how to present those. So I can't just constantly if I could. If I could just put out art hacks, I'd probably have a way bigger channel. I probably wouldn't be enjoying what I'm doing. But um, but if you can kind of find something, if you can put some time into things. But the reason why those videos blew up was be a lot of that was because of the you know the keywords and you know just the fact that it was art hacks, which is a pretty well searched term. But then when you add comics to that, it's like oh, this is this is kind of what I'm looking for or whatever. So um, you know. That's just another tip, and that all has to do with like SEO and things, and eventually, you know, YouTube or whatever, kind of finding your stuff and everything. So, yeah. you know, for what it, you know, for yeah. what that's worth. Yeah, I, I, I've used some of the uh, those tags in on the YouTube, but you know, I I know I need a lot more to go further into it. Right. Uh, I, I just put what first comes to my mind and. Yeah, me too. And I don't, I probably could do a lot better with mine. I kind of just try to think, I mean, at one point I tried to sign up for a thing that was going to give me like different keywords. And then the service I signed up for, they had a bunch of different features. And when I signed up for it, they had a feature where they were going to give you keywords and then they removed that to more a higher tier that you had to pay for. So I'm like, well, you know, you know, but I really probably, it would be beneficial for me to probably do that or do a little more research that that information is out there, but it does take a lot of time. I'm not going to lie. Like when you're and you, but you do get better at it. Like 
now it's really not when I upload a video, there's not a whole lot of thinking like I'll put my keywords in and because I put out so many videos, a lot of those keywords are similar. So I can kind of cut and paste ones that I did before, like with my 100 days of making comics videos, a lot of those keywords are already there so I can cut and paste them and stuff. When you're first starting off, I remember when I first decided, well, I'm going to try to really go hard on the keywords and all that. It took me a long time to upload videos because there's there's so much stuff you can do. And sometimes if you're not getting a lot of views, sometimes I realize they're really worth it to take this much time to upload a video. Um, so that you kind of have to decide on that. But you do get better. But so now I'm at the point where it's really not that difficult for me to put all these keywords and things because I've kind of I've done it enough time and I kind of got it down to a sort of a science. Um, but I mean, I, I can always improve on that too. So, but, um, you know, so just start, start doing that and see where you get with it. Everything One question about yeah. the keywords, right? Cause I know I've had this experience and I've had nowhere the amount of views you've had, um, on videos and stuff, but I have had experiences where I've finished a video, I've keyworded everything correctly. And there's like, it's like one of the lowest viewed videos but then I'll also have these ones that, because we do a lot of these live streams and it'll be something where I didn't keyword it at all because I was yeah. just exhausted. It's like we go late into the night and I was like, I'll just keyword in the morning. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, whoa, that had got a ton of views. <laughs> like, yeah. and I'm like, well, should I keyword it? Like, what are you doing, YouTube? Okay, um, yeah, here's I the also, thing. I don't okay. know if this is going to tie into a topic later. If, if, if so, maybe we don't want to jump into it yet. But Hugh did it in the chats, um, mentioned he heard a new metric that YouTube algorithm is weighing your channel by whether or not your viewer clicks another one of your videos after watching. And then he was saying, so getting to the end of your video and then having a recommend for the next video is really important. Yeah, yeah. I thought oh, that was a yeah. really cool tip. And um, I don't know if we're going to, uh, maybe I'm jumping too soon. No, that's good. Cool. Let me try to touch on both of your questions. Um, yeah. Wait, wait, because uh, I was gonna. What were you? What were? You, what was the first question? Because I had something I was gonna say, and now I just uh, have you had a moment where you didn't. Okay, so I keywords. Did it all keywords. Wrong, and then Here's the thing with keywords. Like I said, keywords. you watch some of these big YouTubers. Yeah. A lot of the times they won't even put keywords because they don't need to because people are gonna search your stuff. I mean, YouTube is already, you know, their algorithm is already determined that that they're gonna push these videos out to people. Smaller people, not so much. Now, you could put out a video, like you said, and not put any keywords, and something could click and it could get it, you know, it could get way more views than one that you put a bunch of keywords in. But here's the thing it's not going to hurt you. Yeah. It may not help, but it's not going to hurt you. And, right. and it could help you. So, my thing is do whatever you can to, to improve your chances as long yes. as you. As long as you know you've got the the time to do that, like I talk about this when I put stuff up on my store, you know, if if Etsy gives me, if if I can put if Etsy will allow me to put up five different images of a product, I'm going to put up five images as opposed to one because each one of those images, for one, they're going to tell a potential buyer a little, give a little more. Uh, information on the product, which is always good, because people want to know as much as they can about something. At least I do before they buy it. So um, a lot of people want, on Etsy or what, on their online stores are just going to put up one picture of what it looks like. But each each photo, each keyword, everything that you can add is going to improve your chances. It may yeah. not help, but it's not going to hurt. So that's that's what I have to say about that. That's um, good. The other thing, as far as those recommended videos. If you watch, and this is something, another thing, and I, I don't know why I didn't mention this before, but there's a lot of stuff to, I mean, we can't go over everything in this video. But if you watch each one of my videos at the end, they're going to have those recommended videos up there. So that's going to definitely help push things out. And that's one thing that YouTube will do is, you know, if you watch one of my videos, hopefully in the, in the sidebar, you're going to see other recommended videos. And even Matthew was talking about in the beginning, that he was watching some other video and mine came up. And that's yeah. one of the big ways that, that your stuff is going to get seen is if it, if it relates to somebody else's video. Yeah. So sometimes, and sometimes that could do with tags, like if there's a popular tag in another video or, I mean, you know, if you're doing like, for instance, and not that people are searching me or anything like that, but 
But like Matthew say, if you put out a video where you're reviewing Young and the Dead and you tag Scott Circlin in it, then maybe somebody who's watching Scott Circlin's video, maybe your video might come up with, and I, I just talked about myself in the third person, which is very weird. Yeah. <laughs> I don't usually do that. Not to, not to, you know, bash on anyone that does that. No, I, no, I did. <laughs> I did tag uh, okay. you, you and uh, Gaz and everybody that I did the book on. I, I tagged yeah. all of them. Yeah. And you should. Cause then, I mean, that, that was, you know, that allowed me to actually check it out and everything, which is cool. And that's going to also help you grow the community. I mean, um, and and just moving into how do you get your videos viewed um, when you're starting off? I mean, it's going to be it's kind of going to be your friends and family that are the people that are going to view your video because yeah. prob- chances are YouTube's not going to push that out. The trick is to make more friends. I don't yeah. know if you can make more family, but you make more friends. Yeah. So and that's just a matter of engaging in the community, um, getting involved in something like the 100s, posting posting your stuff on other social media um, yeah. sites, Facebook, Instagram, let people on Instagram know you're, you've got a YouTube channel, Make let people know on Facebook. And I mean, I think in the hundreds, that's a, that's a big thing. I think, I think anyone in the hundreds that has a YouTube channel, that's probably where they're getting most of their views from is that community. But yeah. then, you know, kind of you know, as you, that community grows, you're going to branch out into other things. Like for me, it's weird because like most of my – it's kind of a weird, weird thing because, like, I, I mean, I love comics, you know, and most of a lot of the content that I put out there centers around comics. Um, but, like, if you go to my online store, a lot of the products I sell are more geared towards, like, people that are in the sciences. And I've been really bad about trying to get into that kind of um, yeah. community. People... People that are into tech and people that are into and those are the people that are going to be more interested. So a lot of the products, I mean, I don't sell a ton of my those type of products to the people that are into comics. I sell the comic books to those people. And there's some crossover there. But um, at some point, I've got to kind of tap into that other thing because I'm kind of doing different things. The other thing is that, you know, I'm an illustrator, but I'm also, you know, I'm also, I also have a background in graphic design, but in some worlds, like, you know, I'm going to be going to this design conference. Yeah. Now, a lot of the illustrators and the comic book artists, they don't know anything about this whole other thing, but, yeah. you know, I'm hoping I can kind of introduce some of them to some of these other things, because I think, I think, you know, you can kind of cross pollinate to these different um, communities. Whereas maybe the illustration community kind of doesn't know so much about what's going on in the design community, comics. There's all these different communities, but if you can kind of bridge that gap and you can kind of let people know about that and just kind of go into different interests and hopefully, you know, get those people to also pay attention to what you're doing. So um, in the beginning, it's just a matter of making more friends. And then pretty yeah. soon, pretty soon it's going to be, get to the point where, you know, I don't, a lot of the people that watch me, some of them don't, I mean, a lot of people will comment and I, I, you know, and I see the same people and, and that's kind of the community, but there's also that hidden community of people that they just like the videos. They don't yeah. feel they have to comment or, or whatever. And sometimes every once in a while people come out of the woodwork and, and it's the first comment you've ever seen from them. And they say, I've been watching you for five yeah. years. I'm like, wow, really? I didn't, I, you know, I don't recognize you, but, but so, I mean, but you'll get to the point where, you know, there's people that you don't even know that are part of that community that are out there watching your videos and stuff. But in the beginning, it's just building friendships and stuff with people. So, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and like um, the, the thing that's cool about it, too, um, and this mainly started happening once I started doing live streaming all the time, is just um, you do have people come out of the woodwork. And they'll be like, I've been lurking this whole series or something. And you're like, it's astounding because you're like, wow, I really want to hear from those people. But it's but it's cool that there's people who are just kind of watching it. And I'm more of one of those people who like prior to kind of getting engaged in the community, I, I would just put on like podcasts, YouTube videos, like audiobooks, and just kind of listen and not comment and not give star ratings or, or interact too much because I just, you know, it was like background while I was working and I really got connected to a lot of podcasts 
only to, like the only time I really got into rating podcasts was when um, I started podcasting. And then it's like when you're podcasting, you realize like every time somebody leaves a review, you're happy because it's helping your show gain new listeners. And not only that, it's like, a chance to because a lot of the time like at first like we were just talking at the beginning where it's like when you're first talking to a camera you feel like you're talking to a camera right and so it's really uncomfortable because you know you don't talk to machines like right and if you talk to machines it's usually like you cursing them out because like you're seeing the pinwheel <laughs> of death for the fifth time or something or you're like talking through your actions so like having to consciously be like wait no i'm not talking to my machine trying to make it work I'm, I'm trying to kind of talk through it, but I don't think anyone's listening and this is crazy and it's weird and you feel self-conscious same when you first record audio and then you hear yourself back and you hear all this, um, and, and like these weird little things that just no human being hears and frankly probably won't hear on the playback, but you hear when you're editing. Um, so like you're in this void of like nothing. And then when you get feedback, it's like this beautiful door opens um, even if it's negative, sometimes it's just nice to get something. Um, and, and you're at least knowing that it's doing something. Um, so like, what's interesting is, like I said, the second you start kind of participating, it's kind of like the second you start making comics, the second you start making comics, you kind of seek out other people making comics because otherwise you're kind of this person just making comics, like, and it feels really isolated very similar you start making youtube videos you suddenly like really appreciate people are putting out good content um you start making podcasts and then suddenly you really are like oh this podcast i'm listening to is like it i might it might be blowing up it might be hanging by a thread like so i gotta like chime in and like comment and stuff just to kind of keep the thing going so what do you what scott's talking about is just, like rings so much truth and about like running, like not knowing who's listened, um, man, you know, it's been like a long time. I can't even think. In fact, the episodes aren't even available anymore of Big Illustration Party Time. I'm bummed but, about like, that because I wanted to go back and listen to some, but I can't. So. I am but. too, and I got to talk to Kevin about that because I have like, I think I have like 10 on my hard drive. And I don't, but I don't have them all backed up because I had a couple of computer failures and moves and stuff like mm. that since then. And I'm wondering if he may maybe has a backlog because if he does, it'd be cool to like just put them up, um, you know, on a stream of some kind so people yeah. can access them. But um, but what was interesting is like I was at a um, at like a, I was interviewing um, like there's these things that schools do where they like invite local companies to like interview new graduates for like potential positions. It's great for recruiting. If you like need to expand your freelance pool or something like that. So I'm going there. I'm like, you know, I, I put on my corporate costume, which is kind of my joke, but it's just like, I feel like corporate stopped wearing suits. So now I'm going to wear a suit cause I'm creative. <laughs> <laughs> it's my little like mind game to play with corporate but anyhow um so i do that i'm dressed to the nines i'm like in work mode and then i'm talking to another um creative director who works in animation has a way cooler job than i've ever had and um at one point it's like we're 20 minutes in this really cool conversation about just making stuff and what we're working on and she's like you know i just gotta stop this conversation and say like i i know you and i'm like what what whoa and then she's like, no, I was like, I listened to Big Illustration Party Time. She's like, you're the reason I have the job I have. And I was like, this is weird because this is like I was living in Oregon at that time and like talking to Kevin and hanging out with my buddy. And meanwhile, you know, it, those connections happen. They happen to Kevin all the time. I know they've happened to Scott. It's just it's so cool when that happens because you're like, you know, even if you like on paper have like hundreds of thousands of, of subscribers it's still a different thing when you like see it in reality and you're like start running into people and you're like oh like this had like some kind of ripple you know that's that's a um that's a cool thing but that won't happen if you don't engage with your community you know because <laughs> you know yeah so yeah so speaking yeah. of engaging with the community a couple of things i just want to address in the chat because a lot of people are talking about giving me ideas for videos and there's some great ones in there so i just want to say thank you for that 
Um, I also want to say thank you to TJ Dupree. Um, very nice comment there. Um, I, I, I won't read it, but I'm just, you know, I'm definitely in good company. So those, those are great comments. You are um, so I just wanted to address <laughs> those. Um, but let's see, what was I? Oh, so there, I, there I, are, I feel there like are a lot of flood. There's, there's a flood of comments. Scott's not going to mention it cause he's too humble, but there's a flood of comments that happened like, you know, maybe 20 minutes ago or 15 minutes ago that were just praising um, Scott's impact on, on people who are in the chats who've actually like really, you know, been, been moved by his content and stuff. So I'm going to flatter you and put you in an uncomfortable position and mention that. Cause like anybody watching this on the playback, who's not paying attention to chats, like you guys should know, like Scott's doing good work. Anyhow. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So I, I kind of feel like we haven't gave Matthew much, yes. <laughs> much uh, room to talk here, but ho I'm hoping I, I do want to give you a chance to kind of tell, because we're getting close to wrapping up. So like anything that you do want to mention, I want you to be able to, to say anything that you wanted to talk about that we haven't allowed you to do, but hopefully, because you brought up the topic, hopefully, hopefully we've been able to give you some, some good advice and everything. So, but it, so with that being said, Matthew, is there, is there anything that you wanted to talk about that we yeah. did kind of didn't, didn't give you the opportunity to do? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I've enjoyed this whole, the whole show, uh, you know, you've mentioned stuff that I haven't even thought of and all, but uh, I, I think Josh mentioned it uh, a couple minutes ago about uh getting a response from uh, somebody you worked with, uh, you know, just came up and you didn't know anything about them. When we made our, when my brother-in-laws and I made our first movie, we took it to a film festival. And, you know, after we watched it, we were just walking out of the movie theater and, you know, we were just heading back to our car and we had like three people come up and like, hey, can we get your, get our pictures with you? That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> so, so. That's always weird the first time that happens, like, you know, because if you do comic cons, sometimes people yeah. do that. But it's it's very, very weird. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but it's cool, you know. It's the it's film weird. circuit's weird too. Um my buddy Jim, like I first met like I'm friends with Jim Luhan and I'm, I'm pretty good friends and I know him like pretty well, like, but it's weird because like I met him way after I'd seen his work. The first time I saw his work was in a film festival, like when I was in college and he was like, I don't know anybody <laughs> like, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, to me, it was this huge deal because it's Spike and Mike's twisted. Um, they used to do these great like things of short animations all compiled together. And it was just a great way to like, when you're young twenties, you get, get some drinks, you go out with a bunch of art students and watch cool crazy unedited uncensored animation you know and um and it, his his animation in that whole group was like the one we quoted for like a year because it was just so funny and um and my wife and i actually when we were dating like saw that so it was it was weird when i, I literally knew jim for a year as a person before i connected the two and i was like oh wait you're like <laughs> But we were already friends at that point, but it was just like, wait, but like, that's crazy. And that's the weird thing about film because you're not necessarily even at every screening. And so that's mm -hmm. like, you know, like you do a festival circuit, like who knows, like who, like, you know, two years from now, you might have like somebody you become friends with be like, oh, wait, I'm a same thing happened with Kevin with his music, where it's like Kevin was in some bands I listened to in high school. And we met as illustrators and then, you know, it, like half a year went by when he was like, oh, I know, yeah, there's this thing, nerve agents. And I'm like, wait, what, what? Like, that was some frad, like very cool post-punk, um, well, post-hardcore band, you know? And like um, that, that kind of stuff happens all the time, you know? Um, so, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, yeah, sometimes in just kind of piggybacking off of that, it's, uh, that happens a lot, especially with people and their screen names and things like you don't put the two and two together. Like even, even Matthew, I didn't, I didn't know until today that you're a fart bucket too. And so, I mean, cause I, I, you know, I get emails from you as Matthew Instrom yeah. and then I get comments, fart bucket tunes or likes from fart bucket tunes or, you know, and then I get, you know, and I 
I'll get a notification on my store saying Matthew Instrom just ordered your books or whatever. So I, I see the names, but it, sometimes you don't put the two and two together. So, so that's kind of interesting too. Like, Oh, that's you. Okay. That's cool. So, but anyway, and that could be, you know, that could be a thing. Like sometimes I've heard people say that you should use your real name. So, you know, cause sometimes they don't put two and two together. Um, you know, so, but, you know that's that's just another another thing you know to think about um so uh anything else you want to talk about before we start wrapping things up matthew um nothing i can think of i think we covered my most of yeah okay. cool because that, that's a, that was a lot you know there's a big topic i think we covered a lot of ground but yeah youtube in general is i mean we could yeah. kind of go on forever so maybe we can talk about yeah. some more stuff like that later but yeah um, let's not try my youtube but i want to give matt a little more of a spotlight because i do feel like i probably me talked over you a lot so so matthew like like you you're kind of in your foray into youtube like what what do you hope to i just kind of want to know like right now what's your kind of hope for it and then um and and like you know can you kind of just plug your channel a little more um maybe maybe just give a brief rundown on like like what went into kind of your first thing just so that we can kind of get you a little little more attention on on the cool thing that you're you're embarking on you know well, uh like uh scott does the uh was it robots aliens zombies and other imminent threats and when i heard that i was like man that that's cool then it's like you know i don't cover all of those but you know the aliens monsters and stuff like that i really like and so that on youtube i i think my very first drawings uh the uh like a meteorite with that actually it's like right there on the wall behind me nice. uh, but uh like i did that and then I didn't do anything with it for a little bit. Then I did, uh, I think I did the 100 days of making comics uh, the first time when I did the Cryptid Adventures comic. And then I've started, uh, I even uh, did one video when the uh, Marshall and uh, Scott did the uh, Take Me to Your Leader Tuesday. Uh, I did one video there. Then uh, I've I think I did 10 videos of different cryptids and I was telling the story behind that cryptid while I was drawing them. That's a good uh, idea. That's a really good idea for a series. I like it. Yeah. Then, uh, then, uh, uh, which, uh, I stopped at 10, but I, I've got a few more that I'm, I've been wanting to do. I just wanted to switch gears for a little bit and with doing the hundreds anthology, it, it's kind of slowed that down as well. Yeah. That slows everything down. <laughs> Anytime you take on the hundred days, plan plan to have other things <laughs> slow a little bit. Yeah. So the question in the chat wanted to know when uh, when Kevin Cross is going to make a guest appearance. So yeah, I mean Kevin is definitely welcome anytime. He was one of the original hosts of the Yardcasters. Yeah. He kind of left. The only reason really he hasn't been on lately, well, there's probably a lot of reasons, mostly because of his schedule and stuff. But right now we're kind of in this period where we're trying to do everyone that's, that's working on the in the 100s anthology. And even though he started it, he, he I don't know his involvement in it this time. Hopefully there'll be some involvement. I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know what that is, if any. Um, so for a little while longer, we're only going to have people on that are doing the, the that are in the anthology. But you know, after that happens, we're going to have you know other people back and everything, and kind of get back to our reg regular schedule. But we just want to um, have people on that are that are featured in the anthology right now. And again, like we did, like we've been doing, you know, hit us up. Matthew Matthew contacted us and said, "Hey, I want to be on." So do the same thing, you know. Um, just let us know if you want to want to be on. If you're in the anthology right now, yeah. we want to we, you know, we want to have you on the show and find out what you're doing. So, um, so uh, be, I, I'm going to go. Let's let's start wrapping things up. But I want to go to Josh and Josh. You promised something at the beginning of this video, so you better deliver. <laughs> okay. The, <laughs> um, here's the secret. We've been holding the cards to our chest this whole time and just delaying honestly to get to this secret answer the, the deep dark secret is work 
That's that's it. Yeah, sorry. Right. Hard work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so um, chiming in on Kevin, and I want to also um, like just kind of extend this to any original art casters member has a permanent open door as far as Scott and I are concerned. So, if we get approached by any OG art caster who wants to be on, they have a window. Like we'll make we'll make them. Uh, like we'll we'll have five guests. <laughs> like, yeah, and 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 yeah. like I guess I should have clarified that mm -hmm. if if Kevin Cross contacted us yeah. or Jeff Lafferty yeah. tomorrow and said, "Hey, I've got something I want to promote or something. Can I come on the show?" Yeah, um, we would make an exception to the thing we're doing right now with the one hundred. Yeah. and like, so, so well, actually, Jeff's yeah. actually featured in the hundred, so so that wouldn't be much of an adjustment. And Kevin. He kind of gets a pass because he created the whole thing. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but uh, but yeah, like um, you know, Matthew, it's it's been such a pleasure kind of just seeing you and like meeting you in person because we interact online, yeah. and um, you know, it's just it's it, like one of the fun things that Scott and I have been enjoying through this whole process is just like getting a chance to talk to everybody who's going to be in the book, because um, like it's a really good group. Um, I'm seconding what Scott said. If you're in the anthology, like, come on, if you're hesitating, you know, um, like, like Scott always talks about this. Corey Kerr talks about it. I talk about it all the time. It's like a lot of this whole thing is just like um, creating it, like it's like the tags thing. It's not going to hurt, <laughs> you know, where it's like anytime you have a window for opportunity, you want to pave things so that you actually can have like opportunity and then the hard work like line up and so um yeah i really encourage people like you know even if you're shy or whatever like hop on we want we want to meet you um if you're in that that second anthology because it's man um the facebook page is so exciting it's it, every day um i feel like proud of what i'm doing for it and then i'll be like also intimidated because everything everybody's bringing their a game to it and it, it's so fun to see those things coming together so yeah yeah um uh so should matthew anything anything we missed anything you want to promote your stuff again kind of wrap yeah. it up with promoting yeah. whatever you want to promote yeah uh no on ebay i've got my book uh cryptid adventures it's uh, i think it's i think it's 13 pages uh of a story with the uh, big has bigfoots uh bigfoot nessie and uh, aliens in the first part and back of it has a two page story of uh, the Mothman versus the Flatwoods monster. Uh, it's on eBay. If if you go to my uh, Facebook page uh, uh, Facebook uh, just look up Fart Bucket Tunes. Uh, I've got a page set up for it and there's a link to the eBay uh, link for that. Yeah, I've only got 17 copies uh, right now. I, I did order more, but uh, 17's all I got left right now. So awesome. yeah. that's lovely, and it's uh, dude. I mean, it's Bigfoot. Come on, guys, yeah. order it. Bigfoot. Bigfoot's the best. So all right. Um. Uh. I Anything? yeah. Um. I'm gonna bypass any plug time by just saying, um, you know, Young in the Dead, not the Young in the Dead, but YoungInTheDead.com. Go support. Um. If I know it hasn't gone up yet, but like one thing you can do is just build a groundswell for it and say like, there's a Kickstarter going up in two days at this URL. Well, not two days. <laughs> Tuesday, not two Tuesday. days. Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. My goodness, my brain is yeah. <laughs> we are at wrap up point. You're scaring but, me, man. I still got a lot of work to get this thing up. <laughs> yeah. There's a Kickstarter starting in one hour. No, I'm just kidding. Don't <laughs> give Scott a heart attack. But um, on on. So um, on Tuesday, um, but that's still not that far away. So like, it doesn't hurt to just get some groundswell early, so we can make sure that Kickstarter's like, it'll fund. Like I, Scott might be skeptical. It's gonna fund, but my point is, let's like get it more funded than any Kickstarter he's done before. You know, I think that would be cool. All right. So I, you know, the only other thing I have to promote is what Josh was just talking about. So again, the Kickstarter for Young and the Dead, I've got issue number four coming out. If you already have the first previous issues, um, you'll be able to get your hands on issue four. If you don't have any of them, 
you can get your hands on all of them. There's going to be tons of cool extras and, and stretch goals and all that kind of cool stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, that will be launching, I'm pretty sure, Tuesday. And I'll we'll probably do a live launch. So if you're around, uh, probably sometime during the day, I'll probably I'll probably do a live stream and I'll launch it and do all that kind of cool stuff. So, um, and when that does launch, if you if you can't support it or if you can support it or anything in between, the the thing you can also do is just help share it, let people know about it and everything. I really would appreciate that. Again, that's going to be at youngandthedead.com. That will take you to the Kickstarter. If you go there before this coming Tuesday. It's going to take you to the old Kickstarter, but it will all reroute and everything. So, um, so yeah, that's what I got to promote. The only other thing I wanted to talk about is just this uh, show that we're doing. The way this works is that it uh, kind of bounces back and forth from Josh's channel to my channel. Next week, it'll be on Josh's channel. Um, sometimes that gets confusing, but if you want to eliminate all the confusion, the best thing to do uh, if you want to know whose channel we're going to be on, what time we're going to be on, what day we're going to be on, is just join the mailing list. We don't spam you or anything like that. We usually just send out a notification, an email, about 30 minutes ahead of time to let you know where we're going to go live and whose channel is going to be on and all that stuff. That is a link in the description of this video along with my uh, link to my website or my YouTube channel, Josh's YouTube channel, and Matthew's YouTube channel. That stuff is all there in the description of this video, so check that out. And uh, I just want to say thanks. The chat was awesome tonight. Um, and so many people throwing out great, great ideas for for videos for me. Um, I love that. And keep those coming. Like, leave comments because I love that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some notes um, after this. And uh, hopefully I will be able to get to some of those ideas because there are some great ones. Um, but no matter what you're doing in the chat, if you're just talking amongst each other, if you're, you know, asking questions, if we didn't get to it, I apologize. But um, yeah, thank you everyone in the chat um, and uh, everyone watching after the fact. Feel free to leave comments, anything like that. But uh, thanks to, to everyone watching presently or in the future. And with that, uh, I guess we'll see you guys uh, next week. And uh, yeah, that's that's all. Young in the